everyone good morning or good afternoon depending on where you're at or even good evening if you're watching this at home this is Mr. Claxton here I'm going to discuss with you several uh, concepts that we missed in that first nine weeks the first lessons um, involving the algebraic properties here the first of which we're going to take a look at here is the commutative property the commutative property we are reordering for the commutative property we're going to reorder terms in order to make it uh, look nice to us so you can see the true or false question right here that we start with is 2 plus 8 the same as 2 as 8 plus 2 is 10 equal to 10 is that a true statement the answer would be yes so we would say that the commutative property holds for this example is 2 times 8 the same as 8 times 2 is 16 equal to 16 the answer I hope that you would say yes however if we look over here we see that for subtraction and division 2 minus 8 I see that 2 minus 8 and I'm just going to show that over here what the result is we know that that's negative 6 is negative 6 equal to 6 and the answer would be false therefore the commutative property does not hold for subtraction 2 divided by 8 is that the same as 8 divided by 2 so I have 2 divided by 8 and I'm asking a question by the way I, I don't want to make a false statement here so I'm just going to to go ahead and say is that okay I don't want to give you the impression that I think that negative 6 is equal to positive 6 so I'm, I'm gonna draw a question mark above that is that equal to 8 over 2 and you know that this would reduce to 1 fourth so you should know that 1 fourth is not equal to 4 I hope you do see a relationship between those two as well as these two though so for which operations does the commutative property appear to hold and we're going to go ahead and say Mr. Claxton only for addition and I'm going to abbreviate and subtraction by the way I should if I abbreviate I should put a period in there now why would we even want to use the commutative property where do we use that and how does that make mental computation for us any easier where it makes mental computation easier is whenever we have examples such as 83 plus 14 plus 27 plus 16 why in the world would I want to reorder these well if I have a long line of numbers like that I'm looking for nice numbers nice pairs of numbers you're trying to be a matchmaker here in trying to be a matchmaker you're trying to make tens now we all know what numbers make 10 we're looking at 1 plus 9 2 plus 8 let me finish my plus sign there 3 plus 7 4 plus 6 and of course the easy one 5 plus 5 and then I just start going the other way right I'm gonna get 6 plus 4 which is it that the same as 4 plus 6 so I think you can go through in your head and say oh mr. Claxton yes yeah, 7 plus 3 8 plus 2 9 plus 1 and of course 10 plus 0 so what we're looking for here I see an 83 and I see a 27 now the reason why I want to switch this quantity of numbers right there around and I just use the associative property to group those together but that's to come later the 14 and the 27 the reason why I want to switch those around is because 
you should be able to see that the sum of 83 plus 27 is a lot easier to compute mentally. Just as 14 in this example and 16. Now, that's not always going to be the case. I made up a very nice example there. The reason why this is very easy to compute is because all I have to do, I know that I have 10 here, so I'm just going to add 10 to whatever value I get. And I'm just going to take the front end. I'm going to take 80 plus 20. I know 80 plus 20 is 100, and 100 plus 10 is 110. Don't even have to go to my calculator because I'm smarter than a calculator. And over here, I'm using that front end, 10 plus 10. Well, I know that's 20. Oh, look, I have 6 and 4, so I know I'm going to get 30 here. 110 plus 30, I think we all know 140 is the sum. So the reason why I use that commutative property is to make things a little bit easier on me mentally. We can all use that in our life. If you look at the associative property right here, we're changing the grouping. Okay? Wait, wait a second, what were we doing with the commutative property again, Mr. Claxon? Oh, we were changing the order to commute, to commute, with an E on there instead of that A, to commute is to move, right? To move, to reorder. Everyone commutes to school every day. Remember, with the associative property, we've all heard the term guilt by association. Guilt by association means you're guilty just because of the people you hang with because of the people that you are grouped with. So we have some true or false statements here. And what you're going to see um, is that the associative property holds for addition and multiplication. However, it does not hold for subtraction and division. You know that 8 plus 4 is 12. Add 2 to that. We'll add it later. Just doing the parentheses first. Is that the same as 8 plus 6? Remember, all I did was shift these parentheses. The parentheses right there, all I did was shift them. Okay, I regrouped it, not reordered it. Okay, so I shift those to the right. I still have that true statement. 14 is the same as 14, all day, every day. If you look at the multiplication, 8 times 4, I'm going to change the color for that one. We'll change that to that green there. 8 times 4, which we know is 32. I'm going to multiply that by 2. And I want to really say, is that the same as, got out of my habit there, is that the same as, 8 times 8. So 32 times 2, double 32, I know I get 64. And I know my perfect squares, 8 times 8 is 64 as well. So notice how it holds here. Holds here. Will it hold up here? Okay, will it hold up here? So I'm going to go ahead and just come out over here to the right. 8 minus 4 is 4. Is 4 minus 2, is that the same as 8 minus 2? I think you would all tell me that, Mr. Claxon, 2 equals 6. That is a false statement. That is absolutely false, Mr. Claxon. 8 divided by 4. Change the color again just to see if you can see this nice orange color. No, that's 2. Is 2 divided by 2? Mr. Claxon, you need to write those fractions vertically. I'll go ahead and do that after the fact. Is that the same as 8 divided by 4? Is 2 over 2 the same as 8 over 4. And I do not think you would tell me that 1 equals 2 is a true statement. Because that's false, I know that the associative property does not hold. 
So you can see there you have several examples to write down in your notes. The distributive property, we know that we are distributing a quantity and we're distributing through an addition or subtraction. So here we have, we're multiplying by a group of numbers that's being added. Now I know that I would normally say 6 times 8, I'm just thinking of it a different way. I'm thinking of that as 6 times 5 plus 6 times 3. Just the same here, 6 times the quantity 5 minus 3, I know you would normally think, well, Mr. Claxton, isn't that just 6 times 2? Yes it is, but we're using the distributor property here. 6 times 5 minus 6 times 3. So do you get that same value? Is 30 minus 18 the same as 6 times 2, which is 12? I believe you would tell me that 30 minus 18 is the same as 12. So using this, the distributive property to complete each statement, okay, I know that this would be 5 times, what, what would go in there? A 4, plus 5, uh, actually, 5 times 3, I just used the distributive property, that's all I had to do there. We all know about the distributive property, I'm going to go ahead and skip this next example to get us to some questions that we're going to have for the homework tonight. So we're going to complete each step and name the property that we used. So to get from 24 plus 68 plus 66 to 68 plus uh, a value, not sure what that is yet, plus 66. So what changed here? Well, I can see that the 68 used to be second, however, whoop, it made a flip. You can go whoop, okay, you can make that sound actually, uh, not too much you'll distract others. So, this is now 68 plus 24, I know the 24 had no other place to go. And 68 plus 24 plus 66, I use the commutative property to get there, look at that, they list that one for me. To get to the next step, I'm going to switch colors here, 68 plus 24 plus, well, what would go there? Well, all I did was I shifted the parentheses. The parentheses used to be here, and now they they shifted one place to the right. I know that I'm still going to have my 66 here, and because it was just the parentheses that shifted and not the order, careful how you abbreviate this one, okay, associative property of addition. Notice how I name the operation there, because it could be multiplication as well. I'm dealing with addition here, so I write addition. And I know that by adding those two together, or actually by doing this, it makes it easier. I see a 6 and a 4 there at the, in the 1's place. I know 6 plus 4 is 10, so all I need to do really is deal with the front end first, what is 20 plus 60? 20 plus 60, 80 add 10 to that, 90. So now I'm looking at what is 68 plus 90, and all I'm going to ask you to do here, everyone knows what 100 plus 60, 100 plus 68 would be. We know that 100 plus 68 is just going to be 168, but I know that my answer is not going to be 168, because see, I, I took 100 here and I shouldn't have. So I know that I need to subtract 10 from that. Makes it a little easier. 158 is my final answer. So notice that little trick they just used there. I just said, well, I know what 100, 100 plus 68 would be. Okay, I'm just going to subtract 10 from that, because I know that 90 is 10 less than 100. If you look down here, boy, this looks like we're multiplying that 35 times a group of numbers. I know that normally following Pima, you would add the 3 plus the 5 first to get 8 and this would be 35 times 8. We're going to try to break it down into two smaller numbers though. So, using the, well, Mr. Claxton, you're multiplying by a group of numbers, I'm distributing that 35 through, because I'm distributing that 35 through, I know that this is going to be 35 times 3, plus 35 times 5, I fill in the blanks there, and I know that I just used 
the distributive property. All right, so now I need to take 35 times 3. I know this is going to be tough for some, but in your head, maybe try thinking of this. We're going to try using that distributive property again. We're going to try multiplying. Well, 5 times 3, I know what that is. I know that 5 times 3 is 15, right? What about 30 times 3? Do you know what 30 times 3 is? Yeah, Mr. Claxton, everyone knows that's 90. If I have three groups of 30. So now, 35 times 5, do you know what 5 times 5 is? Yeah, 5 times 5, Mr. Claxton, that's 25, I know that. What about 30 times 5? Well, 30 times 5 is 150. Well, let me see if I can finish out that 5, the untraditional way of making a 5 there. Kind of have to get creative with this uh, tablet that I'm drawing on. So is it 90 plus 15 a lot easier to do than 35 times 3? Okay, 90 plus 15. I know that 100 plus 15 would be 115. So I know this isn't going to be that. It's going to be 10 less than that. And then 150 plus 25. Well, Mr. Claxton, I can add those. I, I know my quarters here. If I add to 150 cents, if I add 25 cents, I'm going to have $175.75, right? Adding those two together, okay, once again here, we're going to take, I know that if I add 200s together, I'm going to get 200, and then 75 plus 5 is 80. So 200 and 80. Hopefully that wasn't too painful for you as we move on into the next next example. Now I'm only going to do one of these, and I'm going to let uh, you guys do the rest. We're going to use mental math to find each sum or product. Okay, use mental math. So I'm going to look at these here. Do I see any nice pairs of numbers? So the first step, that it, that, or the first thing that I'm going to look at, I see 46 and 24. Now why would I ever want to add those together? Because of the 6 and the 4 is why. So I need to get this 24 over by the 46. Now what your book says to do is your book says, well first you have to shift these parentheses, one to the right. So in shifting the parentheses, one to the right, we now have used what property? Ask yourself. You should be saying the associative property. Now why in the world would you shift those, Mr. Claxon? Well, I wanted to group those together so I could then flip um, these two around by way of the commutative property. Now, that's what your book says to do. I'm going to show you there actually is an easier way. So now we'd have 46 plus 24 plus 28. And I really know that those parentheses really do not mean anything because I have addition all through here. Those parentheses really do not mean anything. So 46 plus 24. 40 plus 20 is 60. I know I add 10 to that and I'm going to get 70. So this is really 70 plus 28 is how I, sh as how I want you to show the work. I want you to show that work as 70 plus 28. And then I know that my answer is going to be 90. Ooh, funny way of making a 9 there. 98. Okay. Um, so what I would have done here is I just would have used the commutative property once, and I would have taken this 24... Okay, and I would have flipped it to the beginning and put it in front there. And I just would, would have used the commutative property because I know that I am allowed to reorder in whatever order I want to, and I am now taking that 24 and adding it in front of that group of numbers. So I would have just used the commutative property to get them close together. I know your book used the associative and then the commutative. You could have used the commutative and then the associative. Okay, um, looking at a multiplication problem over here, 96 times 4 just isn't fun to do in your head at all. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the associative property first, and we're going to call that 96 times, and then I'm going to go ahead and shift those parentheses again. Shift those parentheses. What property is that when I shift them? I 
I think you're, I hear you thinking it. That's right, it is the associative property. I just used the associative property because all I did was regroup. Okay, I am now associating the 4 times the 5 first. And we all know that 4 times 5 is 20. And I still have my 96 being multiplied times 20. The reason why I want to multiply 96 times 20 is because there's many ways that I can multiply that easily. If you know what 96 times 2 is, then all you're going to do is add a 0 onto the end. So what is 96 times 2? Well, I know what 100 times 2 would be. That would be 100. Let's see. 96 is 4 less. So two groups of 4. So 8 less than 200. 8 less than 200 would be 192. So that would be 96 times 2. However, I know that extra 0 right there, okay, I'm multiplying by 20. So really, my product is 1,920. You could also do this by taking 96 times 10 and adding it to 96 um, times 10. So what's 96 times 10? 960, right? It would be 960 plus 960. Maybe you like doing that a lot better. 960 plus 960. That's 900 plus 900, 1800. 60 plus 60, 120. 1800 plus 120, okay, 1920. And that pretty much sums it up for today. That's 21 minutes uh, that you've gone here. You should be able to complete the homework in a timely manner now. And uh, if you have any questions, I will be available to answer them. Thank you very much.